Hello there and welcome to another episode of the Extreme Improv Podcast Skill Show. Don't know why I said it like that. Sometimes I feel the need to try and make this more energetic and entertaining just with the tone of my voice and I think frankly I'm overhyping it. But anyway, I digress. So yes, this is the Extreme Improv Podcast Skill Show and if you have not heard this before, what it is, is it's a weekly podcast where I, David Postansky, the host of this show, will talk about various improv techniques, uh, improv formats, improv games, and say about ideas of how to be successful in doing them. So it's like a learning tutorial kind of podcast thing. But I also like to try and keep it lighthearted and fun. So don't think don't think it's all going to be learning and like you're at school because that is not the idea. But on today's episode what are we going to talk about? We're going to talk about the short form improv game Story Story Die. Sometimes known as Whoops or just Die or there's a, probably a million other variations on the formula. And just to give a brief description the way it works is you'll have several players stood in a row facing the audience and then you'll have the MC, the host or a facilitator of some kind, could even be an audience member, who will point to one player at a time. Whichever player they are pointing at will have to be telling a story. If the person, if the, we'll call them the MC, if the MC stops pointing at a player, they have to immediately stop telling the story. And if the MC starts pointing at someone else, that player has to immediately start telling the story. So, just to clarify this a little bit more, uh, it could be that one player is saying, I was going to the, and at that point, after the word the, the MC stops pointing at that player, and then they point to someone else. So the sentence that the previous player had said was about going to the, and the next player might say, shops, and then they'll continue telling the story from there. So you continue telling the story if the MC is pointing at you, quite basically, uh, basic like that. Also, um, it could be that you get stopped midway through a word. If you get stopped midway through a word, you don't continue the word because if the MC is no longer pointing at you, you immediately stop. The example I always give on this is if the MC is pointing at you, you might say something like, that was absolutely extraordinary. And if at that point the MC stops pointing at you, you do not finish the word extraordinary, but you stop on extraordin, and then when the MC points to the next player, it will be their challenge, their task, to go airy, to complete the word extraordinary. And then they will continue speaking. They won't just finish that word. They'll be, uh, so it would sound like, um, I went to the shop and it was absolutely extraordinary to be in such a shop as this. Now obviously this is going to be a little bit confusing as once again as always on these skill shows podcast it is just my voice you're hearing and so trying to demonstrate two or more players continuing a single sentence just in my voice isn't going to be incredibly easy but I think I think I've basically gone over how the how the game works. So how do are you successful or not successful? The game is a challenge where you can win and lose. If you do not continue the sentence so that it's got logic and actually makes sense as a sentence, if you, um, if someone said extraordin and then the other person continued extraordinary, that would sound like the sentence was extraordin extraordinary, which doesn't make any sense. So you can't back up. You always have to continue forwards. If the person said... Um, I went into the shop and it was absolutely, and then the next player continued by saying, I was sat in my house one morning. It wouldn't sound like it followed on because the sentence, the previous sentence was not completed. So if the story isn't continued I and mean, it doesn't make sense, then the player who has failed to make sense or failed to continue is out of the game. If there is a hesitation, which we count in this game as an extended pause, or saying something like, uh, 
or um, as I so frequently do when I'm trying to do these podcasts off the top of my head. But if there is a hesitation, then the player is also going to be out. And the way that we know the player will be out is that we encourage our audience to listen carefully because they will be the ones who are judging when a player is out. So if either of these rules are broken, the story doesn't continue, or there is a hesitation of some kind, then the audience will be instructed to shout out, DIE! And if they shout out die, as long as the MC agrees that that was fair, uh, or sometimes even if they don't, then that player will be out of the game. So, what are the tips for doing this successfully? So, I would say a way you can practice this. You can probably just hear that Facebook is pinging in the background. Uh, So I do apologise, that's very unprofessional of me, but I don't think I'm going to do anything to stop it. Um, but anyway, the thing I would suggest to uh, be successful at this is to just try talking as a stream of consciousness, very much like I am now. Very much, if you've listened to me ever on one of these podcasts, I keep talking. And one of the reasons I keep talking is because if I'm doing a podcast solo, I know that if I suddenly lose my train of thought or try to... um come up with words then just as I just demonstrated there'll be a little bit of a pause it'll it'll lose its flow so you want to just practice continually talking a stream of consciousness I will try and demonstrate this for you and I'm going to I'm looking across the room I'm in and I see some mouthwash yes I do use mouthwash for those who don't believe that But, okay, so I'm going to talk about some mouthwash, and I'm going to try and keep talking. Now, this isn't the game just a minute. You are allowed to repeat words, but you're not allowed to hesitate by going uh or um, and you're also, you have to continue a story, which won't be relevant for the demonstration I'm about to give, but I'm going to talk about mouthwash. Every morning when I get up, I just feel like my tongue is like a carpet. It's it's fuzzy, it's like a rug, there's dog hair, there's bits of fluff, you know, there's all sorts of nastiness and gremlin swilling about in the back of my throat, and I feel terrible. Is it any wonder why none of my seven wives will want to kiss me early in the day? So I have made it the routine that I always go into my bathroom and pick up my Aquafresh mouthwash, swill a goblet's worth within my throat, spit it out, and then I feel minty and fresh for the day. So, there was a quick example, I don't know how long I spoke for, um, but there was probably a little bit of a hesitation in there. I was very, very careful not to say, oh, um, which is something I frequently do do. (sighs) That was a yawn, a genuine yawn, and that would be counted as a hesitation in this game. So I allowed the yawn to to take its life there, just as that example. So you want to practice just keep talking. Now, the length of time I was speaking then is longer than you probably have to in this game, because the MC would have pointed to someone else. So, the biggest key, I would say, is to watch the MC. Watch the MC to see where they are pointing, and that way you'll know when it's your turn or not. Because... The other major thing you have to do, the other main thing, perhaps even the most important thing you have to do, is... No, I'd say the second most important after watching the MC, and I'll justify why in a second. But the second most important thing you have to do is listen like crazy. Now, normally I'd say the most important rule with any improv is just listen to your scene partners. But in this one, I would actually say it's probably the second most important rule. Because if the MC is pointing towards you, then it's your turn to start speaking. If they stop pointing towards you, then you can stop speaking. If you follow that rule, then there is, perhaps by luck, if you had your ears blocked up, there is a chance that you would be successful. However, if um, if you're not listening to your scene partner, the chances of you actually being able to continue sentences is unlikely, but you might you might fluke out and have some sentences that naturally come to a close. But why do I say that watching the MC is more important than um, listening? As I just said, that you might luck out and just be able to continue things, because what, what I'm getting at here is that sometimes the instinct is, as you're trying to listen hard 
to your scene partners who are speaking. They will be facing out towards the audience and you're turning your head to face towards them. And you will not see when the MC points towards you. And if they suddenly point towards you, then you're going to instantly be out without even trying to speak because you weren't aware that you needed to come in. So that's why sometimes it will be that even if you're not listening, if you see the person, the MC point towards you, you might be able to luck out as long as you do something which fits in with what came before. You don't necessarily have to take in all of the details. Now, I'm saying this, I'm being the devil's advocate, because, of course, you do want to listen like crazy and take in all of the details so you can continue the story and make it a um, nicely plotted story where everything ties in together and is relevant and builds upon what the all scene partners have said. But I'm talking, like, literally, if, if you didn't listen but looked at the MC that would be the most important thing so it's just to emphasize how important it is to look at the MC now if uh, you're ha you have impaired hearing in some way if you um, have a slight uh, deafness or other hearing uh, impediment impediment impairment then obviously you will need to look towards the scene partners to be able to play this game most successfully So, what can you do to actually listen better? So, when your scene partners are talking, try and get a sense of who are the characters they've mentioned, what are the plot points they've mentioned, and then you have to start being, as I've mentioned in previous episodes, being your own director. You have to start thinking about, okay, so where could this story go? And it's not pre-planning, but you're trying to always make a... In fact, this is another thing I said was the most important rule. Make it an entertaining show. So with any of these short-form games, it's not always about um, just playing by the rules. It's by making it an entertaining show. So that's what I'd truly say is the most important rule. So when you're listening to your scene partner, think, OK, if they're mentioning about the mouthwash and then the... then. Robocop turns up or whatever. Ooh, what can I tie into Robocop? Maybe the Terminator or Predator turns up or something like this. Or, you know, maybe Robocop wants to avenge his death or whatever. And you can start thinking, okay, I'm going to include these elements because this is relevant. And, oh, perhaps Robocop is investigating something undercover at the mouthwash factory. And then you can start thinking of these things. Whereas if you just go in completely cold, a mistake I often see made... A mistake I often see made with this game is every time it comes to a new play, it's almost like a soft reset of the story. So player one might be like, one day Robocop went to work in a mouthwash factory and then the MC will point to someone else and they'll go, um, Robocop always wanted to work in a mouthwash factory so he went and applied for a job. And then it points to a third player and they might suddenly say... Um, it was Robocop's first day and he wanted to try some mouthwash and like within three or four sentences the story hasn't built upon anything. So you always, always, want, always want to move the story forwards. So that's a very important tip because that will make the scene interesting. So go from one day Robocop wanted to work in a mouthwash factory, next player, because he knew... That the mind control serum was being distributed through Aquafresh. And then the next player could be like, Madam Aquafresh was a ruler of Cambodia. And she had decided to invade through stealth every other country that uses mouthwash. This is a terrible story. But you see what I mean. I'm like building upon it. Um, on Robocop's lunch break, he met this small boy who said that he had seen something. So later that evening, Robocop went round to the mansion of Madame Mouthwash or whatever. I always come up with some really bad, <laughs> weird examples of stories and scenes and things when I'm describing them. But hopefully you get the idea for, for the purposes of demonstration build upon your story also listen like crazy in that so that you can continue be don't stand there chewing don't stand there with your mouth tightly shut or gaping open just be ready to 
pick up the story from where the other person left off, and continue it. Because if you do not continue it, it would seem like it felt flat. And I know that's just one person speaking, but I try to vary my voice just a little bit so you could see where the next person then comes in. Because when the next person comes in, if it continues, it will sound really nice. We get the idea? Yeah, perfect. So, the the other thing I can say with this is diction. Make sure that um, outside of playing this game, because people think, oh, improv, I'll just turn up and do it. No, it needs to be practiced, it needs to be rehearsed. If you practice and rehearse it, you will become a better player. You'll become a better performer, a better actor. And, and I will say... Like I said, you can just speak a stream of conscious just in your own time, just to practice the skill. How can I come up with things? And there's things like um, Mystery Box, where people, or perhaps misnaming that game, or perhaps there's various names for it, but it's something like Mystery Box, where you're just pulling loads of items out, like Mary Poppins... Uh, bag where she can just pull an unlimited number of huge items out of her carpet bag. Just keep naming things that come out of this box. Or do a mind meld where you come up with things, different words, different items, different objects, and you just need to keep thinking, and that will help keep your mind fresh. And, And I always call it a mental thesaurus, where you have synonyms for different items, and um... And it's more than just that thinking um, sad, upset as a direct synonym. It could be that you you think of a related item. So if you got um, a hairbrush, you could think, well, the closest synonym I could think for a hairbrush is a comb. And that might count as a synonym, even though they're kind of different objects. But if I if I use my mental thesaurus, I will think of a hairbrush and then I will think of hair and mousse and shampoo and hair lice and buzz cut and hats and all of these are related to hair and uh, hair brushes and combs and so on and so forth even though they're not direct synonyms it's just about expanding the thesaurus into being related ideas so you can practice that in your own time but also practice your diction now people are going to be listening to this and thinking well david you sound awful. You sound like... I know, I know. I always have things I need to work on. I've been hearing this since before I went to drama school. And I'll just tell like a quick story on this, just so you can notice it about me. I'm not feeling particularly self-conscious, but I'll probably regret this later on when I get feedback on it. But I used to uh, slush up my words a little bit. So um, a common one would be if I was pronouncing words like strong, without being S-T-R... I would go strong and strength and stuff like this. And and instead of saying drip, I'd say drip, like, you know, J-R-I-P, drip, you know. And having slightly slushy sounding words like that means that you're going to stumble on your words. So if you can work on your diction and try to speak clearly then you'll find this game a lot easier because when it suddenly comes to you and you have to suddenly speak when the MC points at you, you won't suddenly be like, and then the person came in through the room and it sounds like you're in a panic. If you can just be like, and then the person came in the room, you know, you can speak clearly, you can put on accents. So it could be, and then the person came into the room and is sat there on his backside. I don't know, that was generically foreign, but you get the idea. Um, and then the person came in the room, y'all, and you could just put on a different accent. And that will be fun as well. Now, if it's one character speaking and you change the accent midway through, that might be weird. Um, but you, you can do things, because this is the last tip I'll give on this one, is it's storytelling. So if you were just doing uh, improv exercise or scripted exercise, or you're a storyteller or a storytelling event... You want the story you're telling to sound interesting. Something I probably fail to do always on these podcasts. It's a thing where some people will sound very monotone. Hopefully I don't. But some people sound very monotone. And that doesn't really make it an entertaining show for the audience. And I'll give the example. So, then the killer came into the room and shot everyone in there. 
a woman screamed because her niece was there and was in a pool of blood and she was crying and said why did you do this and the killer said because of what you looked at me the other week like and it's just like that sounds really boring and you could have fun with doing something monotone if it was uh, for contrast or juxtaposition or or just to play against what you're doing but generally you want it to have you want to add a little color a little uh flavor a little spice to the way you say things so if you're storytelling you want to engage the audience you want to make your words clear and this can also make it a little bit easier just in terms of the tactics of the games because sometimes it will allow you to draw words out because if you're speaking very fast then it will make it very difficult for the next player to come in plus the audience won't have heard what you're saying anyway and if they didn't hear what you're saying anyway then they won't know that the next player went wrong when they went wrong get what i mean So, if you're like, and then the killer came into the room and looked at everyone, pulled out his rifle and took a massive shot, bang! Because then if you go bang, and it continues to the next one, they'll have to go, "Mm," like this, and finish off the word bang. Um, And then the mother was crying her eyes out. Or you might go, and then the mother was crying her eyes out. Oh, why did you do this? (laughs) Oh, my little niece. Or, Or whatever, what have you. You get what I mean. Add some colour, add some variety. This is storytelling. There are the rules of the games, yes, but always you're trying to make it an entertaining show first. So just to summarise, and then we're going to wrap this one up. Listen to what your scene partners are saying so that you can be prepared to come in. Look like crazy at the MC. If you are the MC, make sure, as well as pointing at people, you get eye contact. That's really important. If you're the MC, I should do more talking about MCing some of these things, but I'll try to in the future. If you're the MC, look at the person as well as pointing at them. Make who you're looking at and speaking to, and we're not speaking to, but pointing at very clear. So whoever the current storyteller is, is always very clear on that. Um... Engage your audience. Break any of these rules if it will make it an entertaining show because that is the most important thing. But just be warned that you may get away with it or you might be out the game. And if that happens, so be it. But entertain your audience first and foremost. Um, And use your mental thesaurus. Think around ideas and subjects. So as soon as you're told... Because, again, going back to the MC. If the MC says, can I have a character from fiction... And we get Harry Potter, because it's always the character from fiction we get. Um, And we ask for Harry Potter and the household object, and they're like spatula or vase, because they're two of the most common suggestions we get. So if it's Harry Potter and the spatula, then as soon as you know that that's what it's about, before the game begins, just think, right, what do I know that I can add in around these subjects? So Harry Potter, Hogwarts, Voldemort, Dumbledore, great. And then spatula... Ah, so then you can think to yourself, frying pan, pancakes. Oh, it's actually pancake day as I'm saying this. So if you're listening to this live, today is pancake day. If you're not listening to this live, then just know this was recorded on pancake days and I've probably made you have a little bit of a hankering for pancakes. But anyway, so if you're thinking of spatula, then think spatula, spoon, fork, knife, cutlery, frying pan, cooker, because they're things that you probably want to bring into the story because they're nice easy things that make sense and we don't even though we want to bring in some things to surprise our audience we don't win any prizes by surprising our audience so why try to always play against things just use what's there use what's obvious and then the audience will easily understand so anyway that's enough thoughts on story story die or die story or whoops or the fabulous rotating circle jerk as it is sometimes known well actually that's an extreme improv game so you should probably see that and we do it very very different from any of these other versions that i've mentioned but anyway i digress so my name has been and will continue to be for at least a little while anyway david Pistansky. you can follow me on twitter facebook and so on and so forth by just searching David Postansky, which is spelled D-A-V-I-D, obviously for David, and then P-U-S-T-A-N-S-K-Y. And then, of course, um, please do follow, like, and share, and subscribe to Extreme Improv. I want to give a big shout out and a push to please like our, to subscribe, in fact, to our YouTube channel. Now, if you don't have a YouTube account, 
uh, you may be surprised to find that you probably do because if you have a Gmail account then it means you can sign in uh, on YouTube so then we need to do is search Extreme Improv and give us a subscribe there we're really trying to build up the channel with content including these po- the, this very podcast in fact so please go over there and help us build that up because we'd really like to uh, grow our channel and be able to justify being able to do more of these podcasts and fun videos that we do head over to our facebook page just again by searching extreme improv give that a like likewise on tiktok and instagram and twitter all of our social medias just go over and find extreme improv our website is www.extremeimprov.co.uk this podcast the extreme improv podcast skill show is part of the extreme improv podcast network but it is not the only podcast we do as well as the skill show we also have the chat show which drops on a thursday and we have the extreme improv podcast radio rumble which is our flagship podcast show which is a audio version of our comedy show so by all means if you enjoy short form improv go and give that a listen or even a watch on our youtube and facebook channels because there is a video version of that show as well if you like other things other than improv and why wouldn't you feel free to check out the mega movie podcast the games monster podcast and the super kick mania pro wrestling podcast also all available on itunes spotify spreaker podbean and so on and so forth google podcasts wherever you get your podcasts uh as many subscribes and likes and follows that you can give us the better Anyway, I've rambled on enough, so until next time, this has been the Extreme Improv Podcast Skill Show, and thank you so much. Bye, Ziz!